Top Gun Maverick is an iconic aviation film among movie fans and stunt pilots alike. Let's break down the movie's top moments to see which parts were plausible and which parts were fictitious. Is Top Gun a real school? Yes, Top Gun is a nickname for the United States Navy Fighter Weapons School. The school has been in existence since 1969 and teaches a graduate level capability for fighter pilots to be ready for war. The school got the nickname Top Gun because it was more about gunnery in its early days and less about flying airplanes correctly. The name stuck and it became cemented in the public consciousness with the release of the first movie in 1986. We should also note, much of our insight today comes from Dave Burke, a former Top Gun fighter pilot and senior instructor. Why do they fly F-18s and not newer fighter jets? The movie tries to justify the use of the older F-18 Super Hornets over the newer F-35s by stating that the F-35's GPS weapons can't be used in a GPS jamming environment. Former Top Gun pilot Dave Burke says that while this reasoning was clearly included so that the filmmakers could use F-18s, the justification given in the film is certainly plausible enough to explain why they're doing it the way they did it. Another reason that F-18 Super Hornets are the jet of choice in the movie is because there are no two-seat F-35s. They needed to have two people in the airplanes for the filming, the actors and the highly trained Navy pilots. As a Top Gun instructor, would Maverick be that much better than his students? Maverick absolutely obliterates his students in dogfights. We discovered that while this may seem a bit unrealistic, it's actually in line with reality. Dave Burke stated that the most proficient instructor is significantly better than the most proficient student. What we see in the movie is a realistic depiction. Are the personalities of the pilots in the movie over the top? To some degree, yes. The personalities of the pilots in the movie are intentionally magnified and somewhat over the top due to the fact that they have to stand out in a two hour movie. In reference to the pilots characters, Dave Burke had this to say. So I think in that sense, they still did a good job depicting ego, complacency, a bunch of other subtle attributes you really got to think about in order for someone to be successful in difficult situations. Is Penny ringing the bell something that happens in pilot's bars? Yes, Penny ringing the bell in the bar and penalizing the pilots for various infractions is a real thing that happens at officers clubs and bars. Some of the things that might trigger the bell to be rung are wearing your hat in the bar, putting your phone on the bar, or getting a call from your wife. Are there any F-14s still flying? In researching how accurate is Top Gun Maverick, we learned that there are no F-14s still flying in the West. The F-14 Tomcat was retired by the United States Navy in 2006. The filmmakers found an F-14 on display at the San Diego Air and Space Museum and had it shipped to an airfield near Lake Tahoe where several scenes with the plane were shot. Contrary to what's seen in the movie, there has never been an issue with an ejection seat not working in an F-14. Is it common for a bird strike to take down a fighter jet? No, it's not common for a bird strike to snuff out a motor like it did in the film. For a bird strike to get you to crash the airplane is very rare, but not unheard of. Generically speaking, the pilot in the movie followed the correct procedures for handling a bird strike despite losing the plane. Are fighter pilots issued aviator glasses and jackets? Yes. The aviator sunglasses and iconic leather aviator jackets we see in the Top Gun movies are actually a standard issue accessory given to fighter pilots. To have patches on the jackets is also common. Is Dark Star a real plane? No, at least not yet. In the movie, Maverick serves as a test pilot for a next generation hypersonic fighter jet called Dark Star. While it's not a real plane, the company planned to have a working SR-72 test plane ready to fly by 2025. So it's not far-fetched for such a plane to exist in the movie. Of the Top Gun Maverick jets, it's the only one that is not a real world plane. Is the flying in Top Gun Maverick realistic? 
According to former Top Gun pilot Andy Mariner, 90% of the flying in the movie was realistic. Dave Berg says that the difficulty isn't usually as sustained as it is in the Tom Cruise movie, pointing out that some elements of flying are downright boring. The mind-blowingly difficult moments that are very physiologically demanding usually last a few minutes. What is Afterburner? In the Top Gun Maverick movie, we see orange flames shooting out of the back of the F-18s at times. This is called Afterburner. They take liquid fuel and spray it in the back, so it kind of creates a mini explosion which shoots an orange flame out of the back. It gives a significant speed boost, which is crucial during takeoff and maneuvering in flight. An F-18 can achieve about 11,000 pounds of thrust. With Afterburner, the same engine can achieve about 18,000 pounds of thrust. Would Maverick have been able to steal an F-14? Graduates of the US Navy Fighter Weapons School have pointed out that the base security would most likely prevent anyone from actually stealing an F-14 or any other fighter jet. However, they do believe that the scene in the movie is plausible given that there are no keys needed to start up an F-14 and fly off with it. Is G-Lock a real thing? Yes. G-Lock, which stands for G-Force Induced Loss of Consciousness, is a real thing. However, Dave Burke says that G-Lock isn't quite as common in the F-18 as it is in some other airplanes, like the F-16, which is the most notorious G-Lock plane. Technology has been introduced to help prevent G-Lock, which in the past has resulted in the loss of both pilots and planes. Are mission briefings ever held in hangars? In the movie, we see a large group of pilots gather in a hangar for a briefing. Former Top Gun pilot Jim Ray says this is unlikely for two reasons. One, it's going to be extremely noisy in a hangar. And two, a hangar is not a secure place to discuss a secret mission. Jim Ray says it's pure Hollywood. Is the mission at the end of Top Gun Maverick realistic? Dave Burke says every segment of that mission are things pilots do routinely in F-18s. This includes the low-level ingress to avoid radar, the high G-pop, the high climb acceleration, and the rolling on your back. Rolling the plane on its back to transfer from nose up to nose down is a necessary maneuver to avoid a high dose of negative g-force, which, unlike positive g-force, the body cannot be trained to tolerate. In the end, David Burke, who was a consultant on the film, helped the screenwriters make sure the movie was as authentic as possible. Actors underwent five months of flight lessons to become accustomed to the fundamentals of flight and the effects of G-forces. Glenn Powell and Jay Ellis even went on to receive their pilot's licenses. Multiple Top Gun pilots have even praised the movie for how accurate it was. Don't forget to subscribe and let us know what movie to cover next. Thanks for watching.